Well, we're continuing with our introduction, our opening up of UCAT, the Youth Catechism of the Catholic Church. And we're talking about uh, the, uh, the creed, our faith, what we believe that leads us to a, a assurance, the things that God has revealed to us about himself to lead us to a life of, of, of happiness and fulfillment um, with him, knowing his love in our lives here and in the world to come forever in heaven. And so we're looking at just the, actually at this point, just the first line basically of the creed, uh, I believe in God, the Father, the Almighty, the creator of heaven and earth. So today we wanna to talk about God the creator. In our last class, we were talking about God, uh, the Holy Trinity. Uh, Father, as we said, God the Father, we believe in God the Father, uh, which implies also though the, the life of the Holy Trinity, that communion of persons, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And that's God existing in and of himself. And from all eternity, this loving communion of persons uh, has existed, this, this furnace really uh, of love has, has existed from all eternity. And then for some reason, which of course we really don't know, this remains shrouded in mystery to us. At a certain point, God decided to create. God, in a sense, decided to, to come out of himself, to have other things to share in his being. And this is the, uh, the greatest of all the miracles that God has worked, the creation, as it's called, creation ex nihilo, the creation of something from nothing, of calling into being things from nothingness and into being. Uh, and, and this is a, a, a great, great mystery. You want to ask yourself, why did God do this? Well, you can spend the rest of your life uh, asking yourself that question. But one thing that we can say, um, the reason God did this is out of the, the a super abundance of his love and to give, frankly, further glory to himself. Um, because, of course, all the works of God are perfectly good. And so uh, every uh, one of his uh, creatures, the acts of his creation, um, glorifies and shows forth and manifests his goodness. So it's very good for us that God created. Of course, he created us, among other things. But uh, it also, we are able to see, as we talked about in our first lesson, um, we're able to see, and that's one of the ways that God initially reveals himself to us, is in, is in, his, in his creation. But let's stop and look at this question of creation first, not from God's point of view. That's kind of a hard point of view for us, and, and, and especially for many, many of our friends, maybe, maybe you're, you yourself struggle with this. Let's look at, at creation maybe from a, a, a human perspective, a, a human point of view, because we live in a world that pretty much um, you know, rejects the idea of creation, thinks that the idea of God is really un unnecessary, that, um, that we can just uh, account for things by you know, these natural processes that, 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 that we see uh, in the world. And so it seems that uh, a knowledge of science makes, um, makes God uh, sort of sort of superfluous, removes him uh, from the equation. Uh, and the thing is though, we have, science can give to us a, a great deal of, of data and facts about um, you know, how things have come to be and we can you know, learn in, in a certain way. And yet, uh, science doesn't provide for us any meaning for any of this, nor can science ultimately account for how things uh, began from, or, or how, or when, or if uh, they did begin. Furthermore, um, we see in, uh, there's much debate in our world today about the whole concept of, of evolution, like once things come to be, um, especially once living things come to be, um, that we don't really need to have God account in the picture that we can just sort of, that things just evolve from one thing to the next to the next. Is that incompatible with, with, our, with our Christian faith? Well, I would say to you, and I think the church says to us, basically yes and no. Um, we can certainly accept the findings of science and about the, the way life has uh, developed, 
uh, it, we see in you know in, in, in the development that the, the, the history of, uh, of 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 creation, and we can we can accept that to a, to an extent. Uh, we cannot accept the idea though that there is is no creator at all, that that the data of this world can uh, account for where everything came from in the first place, and as we will see later on. We can accept it in the idea of the creation of, uh, of man, that, that a human being comes to be through some kind of a purely uh, biological process, because that li leaves out a big part of what a human being is. But that's getting a little bit of a, uh, ahead of ourselves. So um, one of the things that, that uh, again, people who want to take a, an atheistic view of the world, that is, a view of the world that, that there is not a God and that, that we, there's no really need for a God in, in, under, in understanding the world, will say, well, you know, things just came to be uh, by chance, uh, by accident. They, they just are this way because uh, they, they are this way. And yet I would say to you that even on the sort of the the rules of good human reasoning and good human science, that's, that's the more complicated uh, explanation for why things exist or, or how things exist. If we look at um, the, the universe in which we live, if we look at you know, even the world in which we live, if we look at little teeny tiny microcosms, if we look at the way you know, bodies work or living things survive, um, it, it seems that there is, uh, that there is a, uh, an order, there's sort of a providence, there's, that, that these things are all able to work together the way they do. It, it's a much easier and, and neater explanation to say that these things were intended to be, that these things were planned, that these things were um, that there is a, uh, a, a, an order and a plan of creation, the, the, the hand of providence, if you will, that, that has ordered and arranged and directed um, the, the physical world so that these things uh, can exist in the way that they do. Um, and, and that is really, even from a point of view of, of human uh, learning and understanding, the more, um, the simpler explanation, and usually in philosophy and in science, um, the, the, the simpler explanation, the one that's less complicated, the one that has to have less explaining to do, um, is usually uh, the, the, the preferred one. You know, it's sort of saying that all of that is in this wonderful world that we uh, live in, this world that has such a beautiful order and harmony that works together in, in just an almost infinite number of ways that it could come together you know, by chance uh, is a huge stretch uh, of the imagination. It's sort of like saying you could set off a, a bomb in the backyard and rather than having a big mess in your backyard, the Empire State Building would have been formed by that explosion. Well, you know, I guess theoretically maybe that could be possible, but it seems pretty unlikely that, that, and, 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 and pretty far-fetched. Um, and so when we look at, at creation, this idea that there is a creator, uh, that there is a creator, that, that, that everything that is that has come to be, uh, has come to be through this, this God that we, have, uh, that we have been discussing for these last uh, couple of, of lessons, and that this God created the natural order, and that God designed this, the natural world with its natural laws and systems and the nature of things like human nature and these to, to work um, and, and to account for, uh, for, for reality um, is, a, is a very reasonable proposition just as a, as, a, as a matter of if we wanted to set it forth as a scientific hypothesis it would be a, it would be a pretty strong uh, Hypothesis, one I think that is pretty much irrefuta irrefutable, unless you just are absolutely determined to and, and rule out the possibility of God, which of course any true scientist would tell you you re he really couldn't do. God, being a spiritual being, 
and science being concerned with natural phenomena, with physical phenomena. The existence of God is something that really uh, a scientist really should have no opinion of, really, uh, other than to say that the data doesn't really seem to, uh, to, to contradict that, that proposition. Um, and so we see this beautiful order of creation in which we can see the hand of the Creator. This whole understanding of God as Creator is even more powerful if we turn around and look at it from, from God's point of view. Frankly, to take revelation, what God has told us about Himself that we were looking at a couple of lessons ago, and see what it tells us about where things come from. And see if this really does uh, correspond to our, uh, to our understanding. And I believe it, it, it really does our experience in, in this world. Um, first of all, it's interesting that we're looking at this uh, line of God the Father, who is the creator of all that is. But like everything that God does outside of himself, um, it's done that the, the God the Son and God the Holy Spirit are also involved in this, in this process. It's sort of a community project, as the UK <laughs> says. Because the Lord Jesus Christ is described as, as the creator, for example, in the prologue of John's Gospel, where it says that, that everything came to be through the Word, nothing that exists came to be apart from Him. And also the Holy Spirit, you know, for example, in, in Genesis, it talks about the Spirit of God moved on the waters, or the Holy Spirit is, is often referred to as, as the Creator Spirit. So even though this is sort of coming in under the heading of God the Father, God the Son and God the Holy Spirit are, are also uh, creators, uh, join in the creation. Um, and if we look at, at the depiction of, of creation, especially of the creation of the natural world in, in the book of Genesis, that beautiful account of creation you know, taking place over, over seven days. Um, we, I think it's pretty obvious to us uh, that this is not really trying to give us a, um, a, a, a very detailed scientific um, explanation. That's not really the purpose of this section of Genesis. It's interesting, sometimes in the Bible, um, in some parts, as we were talking about before, you know, there are different kinds of writing in the Bible. The writers are trying to emphasize the literalness of what they're trying to say. Like, for example, in, at the beginning of St. Luke's Gospel, St. Luke is very emphatic to pin down the birth of Jesus Christ to a particular place and a particular time when this person or that person was ruling this part of the Roman Empire at this particular age, at this particular place, in this particular province, this happened. And, and so St. Luke is emphasizing, I'm writing history. We don't see that sort of effort in, the, in this account of, of creation at the beginning uh, of Genesis. It doesn't really go into uh, a, a scientific explanation uh, of how things uh, come, came into being. Yet it does give us a very, very profound uh, theological understanding of how things came into being. And as, as a matter of fact, uh, it comports pretty well with what we understand about the origins of the universe that I, I understand from our, my friends who are physicists and, and things like that. One of the things that we see is that, that God's creation really is orderly. It's, it's not haphazard. Um, and, and God is really sort of in charge of the situation. <laughs> how, does, how does creation come about? How do things come to be? Uh, we, in, in some ancient creation stories of other you know, civilizations or whatever, there are all kinds of crazy stories about like this, you know, like a big um, you know, contest, a you know, big battle with dragons or whatever, and things being slit open and whatever. Um, and we see none of that in this story of creation. We really see God as we understand God. God the all-powerful. God the all-knowing. God who is. And he speaks. And he says things like, let there be light. And there's light. Uh, and God speaks. And then it is. Creation for God is literally no sweat. <laughs> It's just no sweat for God. It's not like you had to work really hard or, oh, you know, or strain or you know, try to do the right kind of potion or something like that. He just spoke, and it is. 
Um, and I think that reveals to us a good bit about God, but it certainly reveals to us about um, an understanding of who God is and the, the order and the majesty of God, the, the, the rationality of God that he has implanted in, in creation. Um, nothing exists except what God calls into being. There, there's no sort of rival to God in all of this. There's no other source of being except what God has created. Another very important thing that we learn um, that is not really a scientific data, but is so important for us to understand the meaning of, of our life and our existence in this world is that at the end of each day, God says about what he created and what he had done that day, that it is good. Everything that God creates is good. Well, that is certainly a wonderful revelation to us. Uh, it helps us to understand that, that, that the created world is good. It's not like a struggle between good and bad and that sort of thing. What God created and everything that God creates is good. Um, all of creation comes from the same source of God and is therefore related and in connection and sort of in, in a sense in community with, with one another. There's a hierarchy to creation. You know, God creates plants and God creates animals and God creates man. And there's a, this, this hierarchy to the way that God, uh, God creates. And it seems to all be leading, as we will you know, see when the, when the revelation of Jesus Christ comes about, you know, the, the, the crowning glory of all of creation in the person uh, of Jesus Christ. There's some other wonderful things that are <laughs> revealed to us in this story of creation. One is God reveals to us uh, the weekend, actually. <laughs> Do you realize God created the weekend? <laughs> That's what the seventh day is, when God rested. You know, most ancient peoples had no concept of a regular day of rest. You just Every day was like every other day. You just worked and worked and worked and went on. Every now and then there might have been special days or a, what we might call a holiday or something. But this idea that rest and worship are a part of the regular order and routine of human life is revealed to us by God. It's a part of, of, of revelation. Actually, it's been said that you know, of the Ten Commandments, um, Nine of them are part of the natural law. It means you could actually figure it out just by thinking about them a lot. There's only one of them that God had to reveal to us, and that was uh, to keep holy the Sabbath. <laughs> and so you can, you know, there's that saying, you know, at the end of the week, when you have had a long week at school or whatever, you get to Friday and you say, thank God it's Friday. Well, that's really true, actually, because <laughs> it means uh, Saturday, which was the original Sabbath, is, is coming. And that really is God's gift to us. And then we should remember that and use it in that way and not misuse it as unfortunately a lot of people uh, tend to do. But so God, uh, God created. And, and one of the things we see too is, you know, why did God create? Um, God created uh, simply out of the abundance of his love to show forth his glory. Um, it, it's again, one of the things that we see uh, in, in, in the, the sort of the second story of creation in Genesis that focuses primarily on the creation of man, that, that God seemed to think that this was really a lot of fun, <laughs> uh, that there was this great joy uh, in showing forth you know, his goodness. You know, you think about that sometimes. I, have you ever like looked at National Geographics about, you know, the animals that live at the very bottom of the ocean and stuff like that? And I think, what was God thinking, you know? Uh, and what, it, what we realize is God, lo you know, loves for things to be. Lots and lots of things. You know, why would he have created in such abundance, you know? And, uh, um, and so God loves his, loves his creation. God rejoices in showing forth his greatness, his glory, his majesty, which helps us to love him all the more.